Roll call. Are you ready or do you want me to do this? Um, Ms. Smith? I'm here. Ms. Shasta? Here. Mr. Haas? Here. I always pronounce it wrong. That's correct. Right. Mr. Meyer? Here. Mr. Johnson? Here. Hey. Hey, you're here. Mr. Meyer? Yes. And then, oh, yeah. if you want to log in, sure. I'm so sorry. Actually, I'll go ahead and do it. We don't bite. I didn't bite. I didn't bite. I'm so sorry. Okay. My bad. Okay. Uh, did everybody get a chance to read the minutes? And do we have any changes to the minutes? No. Yes, no? No. 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 Oh, okay. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? I move that we approve the minutes of the last meeting, April 19th. Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Those abstained? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dokey. Do we have any changes to the agenda? I just wanted to add a discussion item on the Holcomb School Zone because there's some upcoming or there's been some email conversations about that and an upcoming meeting with the Holcomb PTA and principal up there. So I would like to give the TAC an update on that. Okay. And I would like to welcome our newest member, Mr. Murphy, Mr. Johnson. Yes. And we have a couple of guests. And trust me, I am probably going to murder the names Justin and Joanne. And Justin is working on a communication mayor badge for his Eagle Scout. Yay. Do you have your project? But you got a packet. Yeah. Okay. We messed that up the first time around. We didn't know we needed the packet and the project approved first. So we had to start over again. Don't do that. Okay, so Highway 99E, three lane intersection. So this is, um, this item was discussed at our last meeting. It's, um, just kind of at the time we talked about the proposal to add uh, the proposal to um, consider a three lane section instead of the four lane section that exists now. So, this is the section that's south of South 2nd Street and goes through Kanema to the city limits. And at that meeting, we kind of all uh, agreed or nodded that uh, that was the project that we would support. Uh, and um, in support of that, the idea would be to send, or the idea was presented that would send uh, a letter that would come from the chair, that would be signed by the chair, but come from the TAC. And um, so that idea, we pursued that idea, and um, it turns out that Nancy had, Nancy Crushauer, the city engineer, public works director, had already submitted a letter of support. Um, supporting that idea and her feeling was based on this stage of the game with ODOT that that was all that was probably required so she didn't necessarily feel like an additional letter was um, was necessary at this time it may be in the future so um, so that's that's why I let enter back on the agenda just to let you know where that was at so we've included the letter in your packet so hopefully if you see anything in there that you um, wanted to talk further about, then we can do that at this time as well. Okay. Well, do we have any concerns about the letter? Are we moving on? Okay. We have a blue flag that says Highway 43 email. Is that the 99 email? On the electronic agenda. Oh, you know, that was uploaded to the wrong. No, Highway 43... 
Yeah, the bridge. The bridge. Uh, 43 crosses goes out on the oh. main street, but it stops at 99. I'm not sure what that is. Okay. Well, it, I know that there was an article recently um, in one of the papers about 43 where the state is trying to get Clackamas County and the cities along 43 to take over 43. Because they feel it's no longer a state highway. This is misnamed. That okay. It, it is simply just checking. Yeah. Do you think it to be Highway 213? Well, we're going to look to that okay. one. Right. No, I think it was supposed to be this yeah. letter. She was. She was just. I don't know why you guys know it. Actually, had somebody else upload this stuff, and I'm not sure. It's a possession attachment, and I don't even think for. Um, I don't even know if you're able to open them. I, I was trying to open them earlier, and they're not opening, so totally disregard. Go ahead and Mayor, he's okay. not here, so we can just blame him. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, high capacity transit developing a corridor working group. Well, this item is again on the agenda. I think we can continue. We could definitely discuss it, but. Uh, we had the Metro uh, presentation at our last meeting, and I think all the, Blaine, I don't think you, or actually Ron, you weren't here either. You guys missed a, a, an, actually a pretty informative session on high capacity transit and some of the planning efforts that Metro's moving through. They talked about, to some extent, not a lot, but to some degree, they talked about what the city should be doing. This is our last meeting? Yes. Oh, yeah, was okay, so you were here, good. Um, so, uh, at that meeting, I think one of the recommendations was that uh, we seek out other agencies and, and uh, develop uh, mm -hmm. a high capacity transit kind of uh, interest group, if you will, that would include not just Oregon City, but maybe some of the other regional players in that, Gladstone, Milwaukee, maybe Clackamas County. And um, so that's what I heard, this is kind of a confirmation that you folks heard that yes. as well. I, I don't, uh, I mean, we haven't taken any steps in that direction. One one thought that I had that I haven't really played out with Kathy or, or with Nancy was um, we could do that at a staff level and uh, start that process. My, my first question mm -hmm. is whether or not each of those agencies have a transportation advisory committee meetings as well, whether it would make sense as a, as a committee member or committee membership to seek out those groups. I don't know. That's just kind of, that's one approach that we could take aside from a staff approach to actually inquire with those other transportation advisory committees or whatever they call themselves to start that dialogue. So that's, I don't know, Mary, I didn't mention that to you. I, don't, I didn't mean to uh, drop that. but I, But as I saw the item on the agenda, I thought maybe that would be something that we could talk about. It may or may not be of interest to you. I think, I think we need to have a representative or a group of representatives if we have more than one interested participate in this because this is one of the prime things to keep Oregon City's kind of hand in this pot so that we don't get forgotten. Mm -hmm. And I like the idea if the other entities have some kind of transportation committees partnering with them to see what they're doing, what's going on. So, would uh, would would uh, anybody on the committee be uh, interested if we get the information? Uh, maybe going with a staff person and, and attending to just go to one of their meetings and say, you know, we we heard from Metro. Have you and are you interested in further pursuing this? I don't know. Hey, do we have a volunteer? Okay. Yeah. 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 So I would say within the next 30 to 60 days, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if they, I don't know if other groups also take summer vacation with their TAC, but um, we'll find out more about that. Excellent. Thank you, Dave. So we might want to also we, let Don Slack know. Yeah. yeah, and so it's, it's going to be one of Milwaukee. That includes, a, that includes a, an increase in pay grade, right? 
We might as well be generous here. Absolutely. Okay, so moving on. Highway 213 signal timing discussion. I just had a question about that. Did they actually do it? I'm, I'm noticing that there's, it's backed up about to Henrici now, which is far better than back to Townsley. So that I normally come out for meetings, or 7.30 meetings at 7.15, and it's usually backed up, but in the last, you know, three, four weeks, it has been backed up that far, so. Evening? Uh, in the morning. In the morning. Yeah. 7.15 in the morning, yeah. So my uh, problem was that they made feet, one of the lights or something, and. I did uh, actually sit out there one morning and watch the signal through the kind of the peak, mm -hmm. um, uh, the morning peak. I, I understand there's more than just the morning peak, but that's the one we seem to get the most concerns about. Um, that signal's functioning, fun functioning at a fairly high level, but we did contact um, the ODOT signal group and ask them to look at it as well. There's a couple of concerns, and um, your concern is through traffic. Mm -hmm. um, we also get, uh, we've been received email notification from the side street traffic mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Can we identify the signal that we're talking about? Go ahead. On it, uh, Caulfield, Caulfield, Caulfield and Glen Oak Road. Right. Uh, and, and 213. 213 yes. So there's a four way mm -hmm. signalized intersection there. And it really gets but bottlenecked when um, school traffic from the high school comes in, into play. And some of that, I, I, I truly believe, has to do with when they approved the original high school development. There were several um, transportation-related improvements that were not required of the high school and, or other school district. And we're seeing clearly failure at, at certain times of that intersection, even though it's functioning at a pretty high rate. They also would be. Uh, we also asked ODOT to consider the idea of the of the uh, left turn permitted yellow flashing arrow, so that when oncoming traffic, when there are breaks in the oncoming traffic, although there aren't many at certain hours, but when when that is available, uh, similar to like what we have on 99E, and, mm -hmm. and we added we added that at uh, 12th. A couple of the other intersections along there, we had, yeah, there's like three of them along there. Um, so that may help. Um, we still struggle, we're still going to struggle with providing um, good service to Caulfield. Caulfield right now is one lane out on the Highway 213, so if a vehicle is wanting to uh, go straight and other vehicles are waiting for the backed up traffic to make the left turn onto 213 northbound, there's a backup there, okay. and that's um, the unfortunate part about that is that there's right now there's nothing on the books for a capital improvement project that would include you know geometric widening or of that uh, those legs of the intersection. So there's really not good opportunity for, to provide that, and the left turn is permitted in there uh, as long as there's room for that to happen. So hopefully ODOT's made some adjustments. I haven't gone back out to verify that. I just kind of wanted to see what was going on. And, uh, and and having seen that, I guess I was fairly impressed about with the amount of traffic that that signal does move and the, and the times that were set, but they said that they would look at it further and, and tweak that a little bit. So they, they also have the ability to download the, the traffic counts that come out of that signal and really look at that data pretty hard. And maybe there's some, some they thought maybe there was some adjustments that could be made. So well, my guess is we'll see expansion, you know, development continuing out that direction. You know, that's going to become, you only have two main arteries, Beaver Creek and 213 with out of town. So I, I can see that, you know, in the future years becoming a, a project. Yeah. Should look at the to the states in 1950. There was nothing. You, there was no traffic. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's southbound at 5 o'clock. The six is just ridiculous there, too. Mm -hmm. That is northbound at 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, uh, funding is not available for any geometric changes right there. Not to mention ODOT just completed a uh, widening project through there not more than two years ago. 
and uh, the signal systems, uh, with the exception of uh, that permissive left turn flashing signal, that's about the most that they could do to continue to eke out any more um, efficiencies at that location. So I'm guessing it'll come back because we get we get calls on that um, or emails on that probably once every couple of months. Okay. I think. Or more often. So maybe we'll just leave it at the future. <laughs> <laughs> Is it just a totally brainstorm, but is there any possibility in future, you know, 5, 10, 15 years from now, doing like a, a bypass more direct into town from 213 where all those housing developments and across the Malala or tying into Beaver Creek or? The only major project I know of it, I'm not sure how much, I think it, I don't know how much it'll help this problem, but Myers Road, obviously, so high school, mm -hmm. the high school, Traffic. Some of that may be diverted to the Myers Road 213 um, signalized intersection. So that is proposed to to happen. I don't have a, a I don't have a good answer for you on the timing of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that would be the next kind of major improvement there. So Myers Road will continue through. Myers Road is intended to continue through to to the other end of Myers Road, which runs next to the high school, uh, splits okay. the ball fields there. That's, right. that's Myers Road. One of the problems with 213 right there is there's a there's a large culvert and it's you know mm -hmm. notice the guardrail section between Glen Oak Road and Myers Road mm -hmm. um, that would be a significant project that uh, I don't think they're planning on taking on. Okay. Okay. Traffic City follow up. The Cord Road and Rose Road. Did we? You want to take this one? Or? Well, the, we did. If you remember, we did the. Um, I can I can help a little bit because we had done the traffic counts on this one. I was actually thinking we should push this one to a future discussion item, but we we can talk about it. Uh, we did the, we did the um, speed study along McCord. And we did the speed study along Rose Road. Um, we we included those in your packets last time. Rose Rose Road is is pretty easy. I thought that you guys determined that that um, the speeds weren't high enough to justify anything. And the only thing is is I think the question is where did where did this topic come from? And so I researched it. You know, how did it come up? And I researched it, and I and I found that um, it was something that was brought to the TAC by Terry Wright, one of your co-committee members, and um, I think that it was a, a concern that was brought to him. And so, um, so I guess my question is, um, do we ask Terry to either go back to the, the person who um, brought up their concern and and tell them these are the traffic counts, it doesn't justify anything at this point in time, or you know, he needs to give us a name and we can send a letter saying... Well, exactly. Yeah. We don't have a way to communicate. Yeah. We don't know who, who brought it up to him. So anyway, he's not here. So um, I guess maybe I can take care of this in an email to him. Yeah. That would work. Outside of the committee. Yeah. And then we will totally take this off the agenda. Sounds like a plan. Okay. And then John can talk about McCord. Yeah, I think I can. So McCord, we, the the speeds uh, fit within what would be considered a, a problem. Um, we have a, a speeding problem along McCord. The, the concern that I had and that I haven't pursued with Nancy or with Kathy is that um, the original decision to do the speed study there, um, there's some criteria by which we follow for assigning or uh, for adopting speed bumps and. One of the criteria is that that be, and I don't have it in front of me right now, but that that be, um, uh, if, it, if it's a neighborhood collector or an emergency response route, that it not be considered for speed bumps. Well, McCord fits both those categories, but yet we also did a speed study kind of leading this committee maybe, I don't know about the property or so much, because I'm not exactly sure how much they know what's going on, that we did that. And so, 
Not that that's necessarily a problem, but we, if we had thought about that before we did the speech study, we may not have done the speech. We may not, not have had those traffic counts for the speech study done. Um, the other thing that was brought up by um, by, by Jonathan, um, David, who's, a, who's one of your um, committee members who's missing, is you know, well, is the speed is the speed posting uh, designation correct, or should it be a little higher because of the type of road section that is? So. I don't think we've concluded that. Um, and then the other thing we didn't know last time was exactly who had submitted the request, kind of like the road road thing. So um, Kathy's given me direction on who who it was that submitted that question. Um, so I think we need to follow up with more discussion with our city engineer and um, talk after some of the questions that came up, or at least the question about should the speed limit? Or should we look at the speed limit along the cord? Um, right now, we've got we continue to add uh, include in our routing of the flashing uh, speed limit sign on the cord. That's a place where that is at right now. Actually, um, it's I don't, missing. What's that? It's missing. It, has it come out recently? No, the everything's there, but the sign that says how fast you're going been taken down for a couple of weeks. Oh, okay. So there may be a problem with that, with that particular sign. Last time I was through there, it was still there. But um, so we would like to get back to you on that one, I guess. Okay. You know, not to add fuel of fire, but Cartlow Road is extremely slow. Nobody goes 25 on Cartlow Road. They're all going 30, 35 in that area too. That's another one. That it's way under. I think it's under speed. If 25 yeah, posted, posted too low. Yeah. But uh, that's just my feeling. Other people might not feel that way, but it's 25, and everybody's going 30 or 35. If you go 25, they're getting pretty close to you. They trying to go past the yard, and, you know what I mean? Falling right in the bumper. Shortcut. Get the one around over you. Well, part of it is like a shortcut to McCord, and McCord, you know, to yeah, the high school. I mean, it's like, yeah, yeah, it's all the back roads in the morning. Well, it connects, uh, one morning of the main connections between Central Point and South End there. Mm -hmm. right. And there's a lot of houses just in that area, too. Oh, it's quite a bit narrower. McCord yeah, is, is a much wider road yeah. section, so it's, it feels a lot more like a neighborhood collector, but I recognize, I think part of it is designated in RTSP as a neighborhood collector. I think they're designated... Uh, the same yeah. as neighborhood collector. I have a problem with this narrower and it doesn't have sidewalks for the kids that walk back and forth. Partially. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Part, it's, you're right. Yeah. It's, it's not a safe pedestrian corridor. No, it isn't. I, I, it's, uh, I shouldn't say that. It's um, not as safe as it could be. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know. In the hopes that maybe we could include this this uh, speed bump thing on the court. I did pull it up off the internet and um, the, uh, the criteria to apply for speed bumps. Oh, okay. And um, so I don't know if you want to look at this. But um, I, I, I kind of, when people start talking about speed bumps, for me it's kind of customary to just start having traffic studies done because usually people think that the speeds are faster than, than um, what they are, and usually um, the, the traffic results will confirm that, and usually we can put the matter to rest. This is one of those where that didn't occur, so the speeds are higher. Um, I don't know, uh, th they have to be aware that we did it because the strips are out there, and, um, and I actually believe that this is a, a hearing impaired family, and they have brought up speeding concerns on McCord Road for several years, they they brought it up. So um, so anyway, being that the speeds are high enough, are are high enough that they're higher than the 25th or the the 85th percentile speeds are higher than 30. Um, it it says that the street cannot be a primary access route for emergency vehicles. And and John apparently is saying that it is. And it cannot be classified as a residential street. It has to be classified as a resident residential street or lower classification. So you're saying that it's classified higher than that? Okay, and I wasn't aware of that. And so this is a little checklist. If the answer to any of these is yes, you 
don't even pursue the speed bumps. So, um, but I mean, we've gone this far. We've had this discussion. I guess I'd like to still okay. have that conversation with Nancy. I just we haven't. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before we tell this property owner that. Well, maybe there are things that can be done to just to slow down traffic that has that is not putting in speed bumps. They have before, I believe. People have put rubber hoses across the road there. Mm. Garden hoses. Garden hoses. Those are speed now. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Okay. The only thing which we don't like stop signs is that you know if you turn right off Central Point on the cord, get to that first street, put a stop sign there before continuing on. I don't know. One of the things that we have done, and you know, there may be more, but we've we've added the oversight. I, we re we reposted the speed limit, so we moved the speed limit signs to be a little earlier, so people would see them mm -hmm. early on. And then the uh, electronic speed signs mm -hmm. been there from time to time. We haven't done anything with striping or um, um, trying to think what else might work in there. Those straight sections of road is you know problematic. The, the stop sign, my guess. Would not be warranted because it's a that's a that's a uh, there's no outlet on that side street that you're talking about. Um, it goes back to right there's on one side but not the other side. Yeah, that's true. That's across there actually. Increase patrol. patrol. Increase patrol would be wonderful. Any yeah. patrol. Any patrol. All right. I don't think we should put the court to rest. I just, um, I just wasn't overly prepared to talk about it today. Okay. TSP update. The TSP update. Um, we, I think, this hasn't changed much. We're we're still waiting on ODET to complete the draft uh, of an intergovernmental agreement. Okay. So that's where that's at. And, um, I think. The real issue there was just some of the costs that we created. You remember the city had created a, a scope of work, mm -hmm. and we had selected a consultant team based on qualifications, and uh, then ODOT works with that consultant team to come up with a, a proposal pro proposal schedule, and all those schedules pretty much driven by the, the state, but a schedule and fee, and at that point in time, I think the fee was more than they had anticipated or had funding for, so they were looking at um, making some adjustments to that. And the IGA piece, um, I believe, is between the state and the city, but that's something that Nancy's been working. Nancy Crusher, our city engineer, public works director, has been working on. So. Okay. South end zone speed. South end road speed zone. No change here. Um, okay. Still in the works. Have not have yet to submit anything to um, Department of Transportation. So. And Clackamas County's Beaver Creek Road paving project. So I was given a schedule for that, and I'm not sure that I, I don't think I brought it. Um, in my haste to get here, I didn't bring that schedule, but uh, they are moving forward with the county paving project that they planned to do last year. So this is Beaver Creek Road from uh, Maple Lane. It's the next one just beyond the new coffee shop there, Berry Hill Shopping Center, the Dutch Brothers Coffee Shop. It's a good landmark for most people. So from that, um, there's an intersection right there um, out past the city limits, actually. Uh, that's that was a county paving project that they had planned last year. It was late in the year, uh, weather changed, and they just uh, decided to hold that project over. So that's still uh, moving forward, and uh, they anticipate that starting as soon as we get decent paving weather. So that should be coming fairly soon. So if you thought you had delays before, I'm guessing you're going to have uh, delays after. Although there is some nighttime paving work planned along there. I think the prep work happens during the day, but the paving is supposed to happen at night. What is the city limit? 
the limits um, beyond plus um, you know where the golf course driveway is? Mm -hmm. It's right in that area. Okay. It's close to that area. Beyond Glen Oak Road. But, but their paving limits go beyond um, that next big intersection. That's um, is that right? No, right there. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it goes beyond that. Yeah, where did, oh, is that in the packet? I was wondering what I did with that. Um, after the school year is completed is when I want to start that. Sure, work during the day and subsequent day we want to get nice. So, yeah, there is an email in the packet that, mm -hmm. and I've covered some of this. Um, negative public reaction. Yeah, I'm going to check with them to see what kind of, um, public notice they're intending to place out there in terms of reader board signs or um, neighborhood notice. And then in this email, they don't talk about that either. So. Is that project coordinated at all with, with the jug handle in terms of when this could be completed, or is that going to be a... No, but the jug handle project, this would be completed much earlier than the jug handle project. I mean, obviously, the jug handle project is, is already kicking off, but um, for the most part, they don't anticipate much traffic impact other than, you know, construction and cones and things on the side of the road. But uh, the idea would be this would be done, you know, before any traffic impact on 213 would happen from the jug handle. And construction projects. And I would like to say on construction projects in the Jug Handle, if you missed the groundbreaking, that was a pretty nice mm -hmm. program, ceremony. They did a good job. Did you see the little cards? I'm not sure. Um, we, we did bulk mailings to certain postal routes, and I don't know if any of you live in the correct postal routes. Or did you get you got one? Okay. And then I, sh I wish I had included that in the packet, but um, it's there in case you're interested in the construction open house. But um, we've been trying to do a pretty good um, campaign on that and um, even send it out to Malala. And Mo the city of Malala has been very, very interested and they've really communicated well with Oregon City, um, you know, to try and keep their citizens informed on what kind of impacts they're going to have. Mm -hmm. And um, they even asked Nancy to come out there and speak. And so, um, you know, the bedroom communities, it's really important for them to know what's going on. So we made sure that they're aware of this construction open house. And we encourage as many people as possible to attend. Excellent. No, I've been getting emails on updates on the Jug Handle project. Is everybody else? Yes. You're uh, on the email distribution list? Yeah. I, I'm, I, I was pretty sure that they've gone out okay um, because when things like that happen, you get more people signing up. And um, so we started getting more inquiries. Um, so I was pretty sure they'd gone out. We just was, I wasn't sure when the post office was going to distribute them. Um, Elisa also gave us an update on the construction that is in progress. Um, she said erosion control measures have been installed on Highway 213, Washington Street, Redland Road, Road and Clarkins River Drive. Um, they began service staking for various improvements. Um, and this will be of interest to you. Night work with lane closures on Highway 213 um, will be from May 16th through June 3rd. So that's night work with, light, with some lane closures. Daytime work, including private utility relocation work, excavating for temporary roadway widening along Washington Street, and excavating the new Washington Street alignment will be from May 16th through June 3rd. So I guess the same dates. And there may be some late yeah. evening interruption of service between the okay. two projects. Right. Actually, have a have submitted to the city a pretty detailed schedule, and uh, I think there's reluctance to just kind of 
public that schedule with, for for every everybody, but they're, they're required to give, I think, at least a three-week look ahead. Actually, it might be even more than that. I, I think I heard something unusual like six weeks and 90 day and then the full project schedule. So there's a lot of um, effort that goes into that. And we're just giving you kind of the highlights. Mm -hmm. So there may be some elevated or increased uh, uh, calls about traffic at Beaver Creek and then again you know, down at the bottom of the hill. And so, but I expect that there's not going to be too many conflicts there. I don't think that they're going to be going. Which one are you talking about now? Between the two? Between conflicts between the Beaver Creek and the Highway 213. They may sound seems to me like if they're going to start after school and this is going to go. I know the night work throughout this project is kind of. It's in fact, uh, what I noticed about the jug handle and their night work is there was not a lot of consistency to when they were going to be doing night work on the jug handle. It was really kind of dependent on what they happen to be doing, and there's so many different work types that are going on. They definitely, but they also are, are um, aware that impacting 213 traffic is is something that they want to do their best to avoid. Um, for as long as they can. The county's project, um, I don't have a clear understanding of what their traffic control plan is. They haven't submitted it to the city yet. So. But there may be, you know, if you're coming from, you know, out, out in the Henrici area, you, you're likely to be a little hold up on Beaver Creek Road, and then, you know, you're likely to see cones and some form of, of construction activity in 213. I'd forgotten about the night work. Well, I, I hear at some point in time they're going to be driving piles at 213 too, so that may be, that'll be a nighttime effort. So they may live within yeah. your shot of that <laughs> intersection. You might hear from that. It's amazing though. That, I mean, only, you're really only talking about two weeks here. That's a pretty short period of time. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, oh, that's just the two week. That's just the two weeks. Very usual work. The, the first yeah, thing is, okay. Right. Yeah, but that's phase one of. Give us some pieces. Yeah, I'll give you some pieces of that. Okay, Main Street projects. Nurse. Hmm, okay. Main Street, 5th, 10th Street, phase one. So remember, there, right now there's three phases to this, um, although we're listing four here, I wonder, well that's because the 10th to the 15th, so we've listed, I, I, uh, we've listed four phases on your agenda, the second one is phase two um, of the Main Street project, which is out further, so the three that I'm that we've been kind of giving you updates on is really Main Street from 5th to 10th, um, the Main Street two-way conversion, and then uh, the Main Street pedestrian bicycle improvements. Those are the ones we've been kind of giving you updates on. And so for the first one, looks like we're anticipating construction to occur from October uh, 2011 to July of 2012. Currently under design, and it's about 70% complete. Um, the set, the uh, I guess the second one on your agenda is that 10th to 15th, and we're currently seeking funding for construction of this space, so we don't really have a schedule for that. Mm -hmm. uh, the third item on your agenda is the Main Street two-way conversion. So we anticipate construction on that from July. 11 uh, to uh, September 11. If you remember, 2011 to September 2011. Yeah. Yeah, the specific. I don't have the specific. Look at this. July 2011 to September 2011. Oh, right. A year. Yeah. Um, yeah that's going to be the first piece. Right, and that includes the. I think that's. And it'll be the point where two-way traffic is going to, you know, become the standard, 
Yeah. Which will have to hold people's hands through, I think. Mm -hmm. There's some discussion about traffic control on that. I think they're also putting in the, um, uh, not automated parking meters, but the uh, card activated parking meters. And they'll be doing some intersection improvements at 6, 7, 8, and 9th, right? Or 9th is done. I think there's three intersections where they have to do the um, curb extensions, right? They have to fix some of the curb extensions yeah. to make those work. Yeah. Small. I've taken off totally almost. Yeah, that's right. So right now they're preparing construction bid documents and anticipate final ODOT approval this week um, to, begin, to begin the construction phase. So that one's coming up pretty quick. That's going to be the first piece. Be interesting. Some of us remember when it was too late. I got more miles in that street than you can believe. In fact, in a minute. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, the tenth and main. That's again the landmark would be Death Brothers there. Um, that intersection. We're calling it the uh, Main Street Pedestrian Bicycle Improvement Project. Anticipated construction. Uh, July 2011. Um, I love that because that's where we got our funding from mm -hmm. grant. September 2011. So those are on the same schedule, Kathy, is what we're yeah. projecting now. Likely to include night work. That's the one that we know will have an impact on traffic, so that's mm -hmm. why I think a lot of that's scheduled for night work. Uh, don't want to slow anybody down from getting their morning coffee. There's a lot of an awful lot of evening uh, people going on down there to Wine Bar. I don't go into Wine Bar myself, but they sure a lot of people like it. And there's some other places that's got a lot of cars parked down there for. But um, lots of people going downtown all the way from the uh, well, whatever that is, tenth to the ninth. That's excuse me, ninth, clear to sixth, or clear to the bridge. Probably yeah. really heavy. That's yeah. part of the. the I think part of the good work of the Main Street program and uh, the businesses downtown and the city uh, has been a lot of partnerships down there. They're really the arts committee. Art walk, yeah. Um, First Friday. Yeah, so those results have been good, and hopefully our construction won't hinder too much of that. I think we're going to give them the red carpet treatment when, when sidewalks get closed. I've heard that we're going to try and roll out red carpets so that people know that business is still open. Anyway, we're currently under design phase with that phase of the project as well, and it's about 70% done. So we're preparing the bid documents right now for that. And then the next one, so I think I've covered all the Main Street projects. The next one is the um, Oregon City, uh, 2010 Oregon City Roadway Reconstruction Projects. That's the Leland Myers piece. Um, so, the right up here is the contractor and the city are anticipating a um, break in the weather soon that will enable us to complete the overlays and striping work on the project. The existing surface needs to be dry and clean prior to the overlay striping work. We need one to two weeks of good uh, drier weather to complete this work. After the overlay work and the striping are complete, the contractor will return to pave the driveways and completing the remaining shoulder work, adjust the manholes and the monument boxes. So. Um, where that one is at. Any questions on that one? I had a couple. Um, do they plan on putting a, side, a continuous sidewalk from Leland, uh, um, or down Leland, rather? Not, not at this time. Okay. We built the curbs and we've graded the gravel behind the curbs for a pedway. Um, that project, we've also improved all the um, the, the wheelchair ramps or the ADA ramps along there to be ADA compliant. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that we've added to that project is a striped crosswalk, and um, it's at Highfield. So it's about so. It's the next. It's it's been the area where they had all the utility work. It's just before you get to Pease Road, that Highfield. Okay. And the idea would be that um, we kind of have a pedway. So if you're headed southbound on Leland Road, 
so you're, there's, there was more room for a pedway on the left side of the road mm-hmm. until you get to Ifield. And then there was more, or more oh, easily right. accommodated a pedway on the other side of the road. Mm-hmm. And even though we didn't put curbs on the, on, the, on the other side of the road, or on the right side of the road, it's definitely wider asphalt through there. And also, as you, you know, go further south on Leland Road, there are some existing sidewalks that come into play down there by a neighborhood, that, you know, subdivision that had built them there. So we think we've, we've done a lot to improve pedestrian safety along that, or we will have done a lot to improve pedestrian safety, uh, safety but um, we didn't include the cost of sidewalks, and most of that's because it's funded through our pavement maintenance. That project has been funded through our pavement maintenance utility fee, mm-hmm. which was designed to um, restore pavement and not necessarily restore or to construct sidewalks. And so we don't have a strong funding mechanism for sidewalk construction. We've done some of it on some of these major projects where there's been uh, federal or state funding, mm-hmm. but the local projects that uh, don't have that, we, we do kind of struggle to figure out how to pay for uh, sidewalk improvements. Second question, will, will there be um, bicycle or should there be a shoulder for bicycles and that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah there will be a um, four-inch white fog line, I believe. I don't think we actually put in a eight-inch bicycle lane stripe, but a four-inch fog line. I might be wrong about that, but there'll be a stripe. I just can't remember if it's four-inch or eight. It's not, a, it's not a bad route for bikes. It's just that one little piece. Um, just uh, south of Avon, going toward Myers or on to Myers, there's just all you have is a fog line there. There's there's nothing to ride. So if you ride the line, you're okay. Uh, but uh, and then the, on Leland, you know, it gets a little bit dicey there for, for bicycles. So, um, but other other than those two little areas, it's a pretty nice little route. So we're we're finding, um, you know, the pushback that we hear from the community is that once we go into a project like that, the desire is that we, you know, we build a project that incorporates headways and bikeways, and uh, that was never the uh, original intent for the pavement maintenance utility fee. So if we want to add those kinds of projects to our pavement maintenance projects, then we really kind of need to reconsider what that, what that fee should be. So... I may come back because we're supposed to re-review what that utility fee is in a couple more years. I think we were given. When we, if we, I think we've had the pavement utility fee for three years now. Is that right, Kevin? Three, three summers. I know we've done about three summers of paving, so we must have adopted it about three years ago. And I think they, the committee suggested we come back um, to revisit that fee in five years. Okay. And there's been a lot of discussion around the city about sidewalks, sidewalk maintenance, tree wells. Tree, you know, tree maintenance, and some of that may all get wrapped into that, and there may be a bigger discussion about how how we should do infill, for instance, of sidewalks that probably will never redevelop, in, or maybe not never, but in a long time. And uh, maybe the right way to do that is to you know, figure out how to, a way to fund those things and complete those kinds of projects, if that's what the community would like. Where do those fees currently show up? On your utility bill, on your utility utility bill. Yeah, yeah, it's got water and sewer and storm, and now I think let's just say it came up for yeah, maintenance utility fee, and it's up to eleven dollars. No, it's gone up from six. Oh, that's what it's all seven something. Yeah, seven something. Yeah, and it tops it. I have one too. I should read my bill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've kind of forgotten. <laughs> um, this five year pavement maintenance plan is not a construction project, it's a, more of a planning effort that we're um, working on with a firm called Murray Smith and Associates. It's uh, trying to take a close look at um, how we should spend our uh, those pavement maintenance utility fees over the next five years. And so we are looking closely at our street saver, which is the database that we use, that we have any inspect- uh, all our inspections of pavement conditions included in that. And it's got some modeling 
I would call them modeling tools, to look at various funding scenarios. And we looked at a seven-year scenario, unconstrained. If we had all the money in the world, what would we spend? And uh, the, the uh, program suggested we would spend around $32 million over an eight-year period, and we'd collect about $8 million over that same time frame. So there's this huge gap between what the needs are and what we're collecting. And, uh, you know, a lot of our streets, especially up on upper end of town, look pretty good. We're able to deal with those at a fairly low unit rate with some slurry seals, those kind of treatments. But there's many other places in town that, you know, need some significant pavement work. So we're trying to prioritize those. And we've, we've kind of prioritized based on if we were just kind of considering street, the street condition and the streets and how much use they have. We've kind of developed a decision matrix. All this will bring to you when it's a little more ready, show worthy, but right now we're kind of internally talking about that. We just had a meeting last week with our um, utility groups so that we could start talking about, okay, if, you know, if we had the money to cover these projects, what kind of utility concerns do you have? Does the water line need to be replaced? Is there, is there adequate storm drainage in that street? Because those are project additions that we may or may not be able to fund through either the PMAP or the utility funds. Mm -hmm. So what we don't want to do is pay something and then dig it up um, definitely within the first five year period and, and have to do those utility improvements. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a solid process I think that we're going through. Um, it's a little challenging because we've got so much pavement need out there. I think, you know, it's some of the decision making that we're, we're getting to get fairly subjective based on how much traffic there is. Is it on a bus route? Is it a dead, you know, a lot of, a lot of dead end streets don't look real good either. Should they be a priority? You know, neighborhood residential streets, they're paying a fee too. How do we share that? Um, so the idea is to get to those, try to maintain, it's like, changing your oil in your car, try to maintain those streets that um, that are in good running order. And those that are kind of falling apart, some of those you're just going to have to let go. So that's where that's at. Yeah. 2011 paving projects. Um, there's there's two categories here, what I call preventative maintenance, which is what we're, what we're calling slurry seal in the agenda, but that could include chip seal or slurry seal, or another another product we're looking at called micro seal. Um, so chip seal we did like on Warner um, Parrot, that was a chip seal. Slurry seal, um, you may have seen out off some of the neighborhoods in the Glen Oak Road area, South End area, there's a lot of newer trees that we've put a slurry seal on. Anyway, for 2011, we, we uh, figured out what we're going to do for this year. Uh, we're putting a Right now, we're in the process of putting a bid document together, aren't we, Devin? Mm -hmm. And uh, those go a little quicker. We typically do those in-house. Um, that's more of a neighborhood notification kind of thing, just to make sure people are aware during the day that they have slurry seal, that they need to be uh, somewhere else or be hunkered down for the day. Um, the Oregon City Roadway Reconstruction Projects, I'm thinking we're about 70% done there. Um, We've hired Wallace Engineering to help us through that. They, they did that for us in 2009. They did a really good job for us. And so they're the streets. I wish I had. I wish we had prepared a map for you. I know Nancy wanted a map for the CIC, so we need to put one together for that. But um, we're doing a little. Uh, from my memory, I'll try to remember. Blue Ridge um, is a neighborhood off of Shannon, or is a street off of Shenandoah. We're, we're including that in the project. Av Davis. Uh, which is uh, in front of the church on uh, Lynn Avenue. There's a piece there that we're doing um, between Felford and Lynn Avenue. Oh, man. <clears throat> we're doing uh, well, the corner at the top of the hill at 7th Street. Um, right. There's a section that didn't get done under the 7th Street piece and a section that didn't get done between the piece that didn't get done, uh, the piece that we completed on 7th Street and the piece that we completed on Malala, which is basically the corner right there by the, um, well, what was the school up there? Easton, 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 Easton School. 
So that's a piece that we're including in that, and that's got water and storm sewer work with that. So that one's moving forward. Where uh, the plan would be to have the bid document together and maybe see construction starting in late July. Where is the, the section from um, on Malala from Wilco uh, down to OC Point? Um, included. Okay. That's okay. included. Yeah. Um, it's like the trail. <laughs> yeah, that's a rough one. I mean, we looked rough from in both directions. We, we we were out looking at that and kind of like, what what can we do here? I mean, Malala is scheduled on our uh, Boulevard program. There's a study that's been done to extend the Malala Avenue improvements from where they stop at Holmes Lane all the way to the the, the point, really. And um, but this is this is a more of a pavement maintenance project. We're going to mill out a few inches and pave back a few inches and um, hopefully that will hold us over until we see more funding for, uh, for Moala. So you, you just completed the engineering? Um, We're about 70 percent. I, I know that there's, there's we haven't seen um, draft plans yet, but they've been working pretty diligently on those. I know there's one or two other streets in there, but they're still in my mind right now. I don't think Kathy knows either, so. so you're thinking those are 2011 projects? Summer. Yeah. Summer, okay. July, of, I think July of 2011, we should see contractors ready to, the end of July, I think, we'll be ready to go. Okay. So I already talked, oh, we list micro seals. Micro seals and story seals, again, I think they, they're in that same category where Expect to see those out fairly soon. Showing you which streets get what what treatment. Yeah, we should do that. I'm at Terrace signage. I didn't know about that project. I, I added that because for some reason I thought it was transportation related. I thought it was like trail signs or something. We're, but we're there's the Yeah. Huh? Where's where's the the that's um, the new boardwalk. Yeah, boardwalk where the artwork is on on 1990. Oh, oh. oh. okay. Oh. Where are you? Yeah. Yeah. The new boardwalk along the river. Oh, oh. 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 I've lived here a long time and never heard of it. Oh, yeah. Okay, um, now I know. And I, I thought that they were like trail signs and things like that were. But they're just their interpretive signs, so not necessarily applicable to this committee. Mm -hmm. I guess you can disregard that one. Okay. And then um, the Holcomb School Building. Before you get into that, I got a question for you, John. Have you heard anything from the school on the safe routes to? Because the gentleman that was in charge of that is not returning any of my phone calls or emails, so it was kind of like it dropped off the face of the earth, so I was wondering if he communicated with you. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's dropped off the face of the earth, but I think it's stalled. Okay, then moving on to Holcomb School Zone. Uh, when we, uh, we've given you updates on School Zone, um, signage changes. We've oh, updated yeah. all those school zone mm -hmm. signage changes. I think we're really consistent with that. At that same time, uh, there was some discussion. Well, about that same time, we took over um, Holcomb Boulevard from the county, from the city limits in town. And um, so, and we also got, I heard through Ted Thornstad, who is the gentleman who spoke to us mm -hmm. about the high school, about several other school issues, one of which was Holcomb. Got a call from the principal, concerned about Holcomb uh, uh, and the desire to see a school zone in the corner there by the grade school. And uh, so, discussed that with Nancy. We talked about it. I was feeling pretty adamant about needing to put a school zone in there. If we did put a school zone in there, school zone 20 miles an hour when children are present. I was feeling pretty good about that until a couple of weeks ago when we got a call from the police department saying, look, we've been to the neighborhood meeting, the neighborhood wants more patrol of that school zone, but it's because of when children are present and there's not many children present, um, 
by definition of when children are present, but um, the state law actually defines when what it means to be when children are present. It's a little different than what I realized it was. Um, so I'll go into that in a minute. But anyway, the police department said we, we, that we think that needs to either remove or it needs to go to 7 to 5 so we can control it. But because it's when children are present, we've got just this little window of opportunity to control that. The definition for when children are present is when the, either when they're in a crosswalk or when they're on the curb waiting to cross into the crosswalk. That's the definition of when children are present. It doesn't necessarily mean that when the children are walking along the sidewalk. Um, so their interpretation of that is that there's no crosswalk, there's no, no way for anybody to step off the curb into this non-existent crosswalk, so we, we really have very little opportunity to patrol that. So we've since gone up there and looked at that. I, uh, my belief is 7 to 5 is, would be um, problematic for the majority of the community that use that section of roadway. And we've heard from others that the when children are present is a little confusing to them. They don't exactly know when they should or shouldn't be um, reducing their speed to 20. So um, in looking at the law a little closer, recognizing that a crosswalk there, there is an opportunity for a crosswalk there on Holcomb Boulevard, but uh, I think what we've heard from some parents that we've been able to talk to is that they're not, it wouldn't be, even if there were a post crosswalk there, and even if it were signed appropriately, they wouldn't be comfortable with their child crossing Holcomb Boulevard near that corner. The school says there's not many students that are walking up there, but you know, their numbers of how many students are probably going to be greater than what we've counted and what we've noticed. We've been up there a couple times to look at that. And so, you know, our thinking is maybe we incorrectly posted that. And so I sent off an email to the principal just saying, hey, look, we've, we've talked to the police department. They can't necessarily, they don't feel like they can enforce this. Uh, we'd like to talk about removal of that. And um, so that kind of ballooned into PTA's gotten a hold of that information. They're not excited about seeing it uh, go away. Um, so we have scheduled a meeting with them on the 24th. At that time, we'd like to kind of look at the speed data and accident data, present some of that to them. Um, there are actually two crosswalks there um, on the Longfield Driveway, which is the driveway that goes into the, the County Housing Authority property. And also the school driveway itself has a striped crosswalk. So school zone's not wrong. It's definitely, I don't know if it meets the intent, which might be a crosswalk crossing Holcomb Boulevard, but there's two crosswalks there. So I think theoretically it could be patrolled. I know as I sat there and counted traffic and pedestrians, I saw that I probably, if I had had the authority, I probably could have written a couple of tickets there. Some people are, um, and you know, there's a fair amount of high school students that wait at that corner for a school bus. So they're not too far from meeting the definition of because they're not standing at the crosswalk or standing at the curb at the crosswalk, but it seems to me like um, they're pretty close to meeting the intent of the law. So we'd like to have police at that meeting. They're planning to attend that meeting. Um, the PTA has memberships there. We've asked someone from the neighborhood to show up there and the principal and Ted Thornstad as well, although I haven't heard from him either. Um, but my hope is he would show up for that meeting. So, not that I want uh, to be a vote issue, but it's definitely right on the on the line about what we could and couldn't do up there. Okay. I think posting at seven to five is um, it's problematic for the many people that do use it. And the school is quite a, quite far set back there. Uh, I think the argument that we're going to hear from the PTA is similar to what we heard in the high school, which is we really want traffic to slow down for all the vehicles and all the buses that turn into there. And I think we can do some things with signage, maybe some of the, the measures that we used on South End Road in that corner there with buttons and, you know, um, brighter and sharper striping. Speed bumps. No speed bumps. <laughs> but, you know, I think, so I think those kind of measures could um, address safety concerns mm -hmm. but not um, impact the or not require a school zone. Is budget a concern there? Is yet an unlimited budget 
what would be the, the fix to that situation? The unlimited budget option would be a flashing school zone. Okay. And we're seeing stronger and stronger demand for that, just like we're seeing stronger and stronger demand for these flashing uh, or these electronic speed signs. And, you know, the, the challenges there are getting power to them. Even if they're solar powered, we've got to have enough sunlight to keep them powered up. And, uh, uh, well, I'm not saying we don't have sunlight in Oregon. I just right there, there's a lot of shade in some of those areas. So that may be a concern. And if we had to get power to them, it's expensive. What's the ballpark just out of curiosity for electronic? We could go with um, the solar powered flashers. I think, you know, we're looking at. Um, Five to six thousand dollars a piece. So for for a flacking school on something like that, twelve, maybe fifteen thousand. I mean, I'm just wondering because you know, like uh, service organizations, Lions, Rotary, you know, they're always looking for projects, and you know, that might be something. That well, and the other thing is the school district, with our support, we've talked about these safe routes to school, and you know, maybe we just need to get that on a work plan. It seems like yet another thing that's that's on a work plan that. I'm not exactly getting pressured from, from you know, our management to, to pursue those. But they take some staff, they take some time to manage. And it requires effort on the school district. Mm -hmm. And so whenever we bring up that Safe Routes to School program, uh, at least to, to the school district, it's kind of slow, right? Mm -hmm. right? So, I don't know. You know, you got an ambitious principal and a PTA, maybe they'd get out right after that. And that's what I'm hoping to hear. Well, I mean, the other little problem is that, you know, a lot of the feeding to and from the school, quite often, um, in my observation, we've got large sedans coming in and out, into the school, dropping off their ch children, and then speeding right down Holcomb Drive as they leave, you know, the school. So who's really the, the speeder? That's the other question. Mm -hmm. And that's true in all of our, it's not just Holcomb, that's true in all of our school zones. Often in the neighborhood. Speeding that we have is is the parents that are driving to and from their school, and uh, yeah, the traffic is, is significant. Not too many people are walking their kids to school or allowing their kids to walk. Really to What's that? It's really increased tremendously in the last five years. This yeah. five years, maybe a couple of years. I think that you know, the often is just getting out of hand. The crowd, not out of hand. I shouldn't say it that way. But they're coming out onto the South End Road there. You see that. It gets dangerous at times because people are angry with the backups and they want to go around and yeah. So um, my sense is we're going to have to deal with the schools as much as we can to help them manage that traffic and you know it would be great if some of that energy about getting cars to slow down would be put into getting parents to walk in their children to school. Because we didn't count very many children walking to school at Holcomb. That's what I wanted to say about that one. So I'll give you another update next next month. All right. Well, that is the, uh, the end of our agenda. Do we have any other concerns, interests, things you want to talk about next month? If we if we are not, and hopefully we will be, but if we're, we don't start with the TSP this summer, next month will be our last meeting for the summer. But yeah, we have to start quickly. Maybe that we'll have to. Um, if we don't have a certain date next month, that we'll have to email you with a special meeting request. So we have tentative meetings already scheduled for July and August. Typically, we don't have a meeting, so. But it could be we have we don't have the July, but maybe we have the August, and and we'll contact you. Okay. Uh, with that, we are adjourned. Thanks for coming. Thank you.